It's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France with our very own Florence Villeneuve. Hi, Hi, Flo. Today we're going to be focusing on environmental activism in France. It's something that's been really in the spotlight recently following a standoff between authorities and environmentalists over the construction of an agricultural water storage project in western France. That's right. At the heart of the matter is the construction of a network of giant water retention basins near the village of saint soline Now, in French, they're called the Mega Bassin, uh, and there's basically these giant pools of water uh, that you can see right here that pump from the ground water table, and they're used in agriculture uh, for irrigation uh, during the summer. Now, about 400 farmers support this Mega Bassin project in saint soline because they say that, you know, droughts are more and more frequent, but the project, and you can see it here, has drawn fierce opposition from environmental activists, uh, trade unions, and anti-capitalist groups for several reasons. They're upset for several reasons. First of all, uh, they say that it has a negative impact on local biodiversity, and they say it isn't even very optimal because a lot of the water evaporates. Opinions are divided, to say the least. On aime notre territoire. Moi, ça fait 60 ans que je vis ici. J'aime ce territoire, j'ai pas envie de le détruire, je sais pas ce qu'ils s'imaginent. On dit l'irrigation est nécessaire, mais pas n'importe quelle irrigation, pas n'importe comment, et ça doit se discuter avec tous les agriculteurs et les gens du territoire, parce qu'il y a aussi l'eau à se partager, et là on est sur des méga-bassines qui pompent dans les nappes phréatiques. Now, this local project has been planned for years, but it actually grabbed national headlines recently after there were violent clashes between law enforcement officials and activists who set up a camp to try and block the construction. That's right. The clashes were very violent. Dozens of law enforcement uh, agents and activists were injured during these clashes, and it prompted very strong words of condemnation from the interior minister, Gérald Damanin. Une quarantaine de personnes fichées à l'ultra-gauche ont été repérées dans cette manifestation avec des modes opératoires qui relèvent, je n'ai pas peur de le dire, de l'écoterrorisme que nous devons absolument combattre. So, eco-terrorism, very strong words there from the interior minister, but one man's eco-terrorist is another man's eco-warrior. Politicians from the Green Party were quick to weigh in and defend the demonstrators. Now, it's important to note that uh, local officials had banned demonstrating in the area, but uh, activists say they're not terrorists. C'est du grand n'importe quoi, voilà. <rire> On n'est pas des éco-terroristes. Je ne pense pas avoir une tête d'éco-terroriste. Hein. Euh, voilà. Bon, on défend l'eau pour que l'eau appartienne à tout le monde. C'est tout. Défendre l'environnement, ce n'est pas, pas faire du mal à qui que ce soit. C'est juste vouloir le bien pour, pour la planète et pour, et pour tout le monde. Quoi. The situation could be a potentially explosive one for the government, and it's really eager to nip this whole thing in the bud before it spirals out of control. That's right. Authorities are concerned that the site could become a new ZAD, which is our acronym du jour. ZAD is a Z-A-D, Zone à Défendre. It's essentially an open-air squat. And you might remember another ZAD that we talked a lot about a couple of years ago. Uh, this was near the village of Notre-Dame-des-Landes in western uh, France, near, uh, near Nantes, in fact. Now, it all started as a protest against the construction of a new airport uh, in the area, but it quickly turned into a project for an alternative society altogether. There was a big standoff between the ZADIST, as they're called, and authorities. It lasted for over a decade, uh, and essentially the government decided to abandon the project in 2018 because it was so controversial. Uh, so the government wants to avoid that, and also uh, it wants to avoid any kind of extreme violence. Uh, you saw a picture there. That's a 21-year-old environmental activist, Rémi Fraisse. He was killed in 2014 uh, during clashes between police and protesters at another uh, site. This was the, for the construction of a dam project in southwestern France. So uh, that project eventually was abandoned, but that whole episode has it continues to haunt the government today. Mm. And critics say there's a growing extremist in France's eco-warriors, but it's interesting. It is a real tradition that runs deep here in France. It certainly is, and it goes often goes hand-in-hand hand with the anti-globalism uh, movement in France as well. One of the best-known environmentalists uh, in France is a pipe-smoking, uh, walrus moustache doty, you can see him right here, uh, um, farmer, uh, José Bové, and he rose to stardom in 1999 uh, for dismantling a half-built uh, McDonald's. Now, he did serve some jail time for that incident. He went on to go into politics. He uh, ran for president. He represented uh, the Green Party in the European Parliament for several years. And people still remember his action in 1999 uh, against the fast food giant because it really hailed uh, him as a kind of a modern day asterisk leading the Gauls. Take a listen to him at the time. <laughs> To 
day environmental activism is really being carried by a younger generation of activists. And over the years, environmental issues have really gone up in people's minds here in France. They really have. And it's it's frequent to hear about civil uh, disobedient stunts or attacks, depending on your point of view, uh, by young people. Uh, for instance, a lot of, uh, you know, there are stunts by the, uh, the group uh, Extinction Rebellion that exists all over the world, but here in France as well. And before the pandemic, high school students participated in those walkouts that we saw in many other countries as well. Environmental concerns really are growing. According to uh, recent polls, three-fourths of French people believe that action is needed to preserve the environment. Now, the president, Emmanuel Macron, from his very first days in office, has always said that these issues are very top of his agenda. Uh, and the Green Party in France has, is gaining more, more and more power as well. Uh, for instance, they made gains in recent municipal elections, winning cities like Lyon, Bordeaux, Grenoble, and Strasbourg. But for some, lip service or even politics isn't enough. And so that's why this eco-warriorism, I guess you could say, will probably continue in France. Flo, thanks so much for that look at these eco-warriors, eco-terrorists. Depends how you look at them. Florence Villeneuve there. Don't forget, if you have your own questions for Flo about anything here in France, you can always send her a tweet at Flo Villeneuve.